we're, we're kind of isolated here, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't happen anywhere else in, in Australia. I love hearing the stories of what tourists have seen whilst they've been around the Sajuna area. The Oyster Growers, or our family that has uh, put so much effort into getting them ready for the Oyster Fest, have just had that bit extra effort put into them to try and make them that little bit fatter, that little bit nicer, that little bit bigger. My name's Annette Plain, I'm the Tourism and Events Officer for the District Council of Sejuna and one of my jobs is to coordinate the Sejuna Oyster Fest. I've been in this position now for about four years, so I've been lucky enough to run three Oyster Fests and it's been a really, really exciting thing to do. There's always new things happening for the festival. My name is Bruce Zippel, I'm an oyster grower at uh, Zippel Smoky Bay Oysters and part of a family oyster business called Zippel's Enterprises. Our family has been involved in the oyster industry for some 25 to 30 years. We started out as land farmers and we diversified because we had a family based operation. So we ran a uh, wheat sheep property for a number of years and then about 17 years ago we sold the land farm and we, we all went oyster farming. Sejuna Oyster Fest has got a very interesting history back during the, probably the end of the uh, 80s and start of the 90s as Sejuna was looking forward to the future. There was actually talk of a festival of some sort and there was a guy called Don Urquhart, a local dentist and a legendary community member, who was actually pushing for a festival on the long weekend in October and he was asking people for ideas. And was actually, we actually played football with him and at football training one night, um, he was talking to us about it. And my brother Ashley actually suggested to him, why don't you have an oyster fest? And he wandered around for a little while and thought about that and he said, that's a great idea. And the next thing we know is that uh, the very next year we had an oyster fest. My name's Perry Will and I manage the Sojourner Visitor Centre along with my partner Nancy Pryor. I've lived all my life in Sojourner. We're actually, um, my family's been here for six generations. Yeah, well, most people live here for the fishing and for the fact that we've got these beautiful beaches and natural landscapes and that. And the, to the hinterland, we've got all these beautiful national parks and that sort of thing. Friday was probably the best Friday that we've had for the Oyster Fest. I think it was probably to do with the fact that Simon Bryant was here and um, we had a number of tourists come in asking what was going on because there was that many people around and we told them that Simon was down cooking and giving away seafood dinners and yeah, everyone thought that was absolutely fantastic. Shell everywhere. Um, they're beautiful. You like them? Yeah, sushi vinegar would be absolutely, absolutely fine. Um, just need a bit of sweetness. Um, a little bit of native pepper. Who wants to try it? It's quite um, potent. Yeah, Linton Brown, and uh, I'm the proprietor of Shelley Beach Caravan Park, Sejuna. We were looking at uh, getting a business. We tried a few other things and we thought of Caravan Park, and we took over a Caravan Park at Shelley Beach. There's, there's nothing I dislike about it. I love everything about it. Where it is, the beaches, the weather, the people. The people are the most important thing. Wherever you go, it's the people. And when you walk down the street, everyone looks at you in the eye and says, G'day mate, how you going? Uh, just as you pass, it's a great thing. It's a completely different aspect of other festivals and it's still, it's still a free festival. It's one of the only festivals where you don't have to pay to get in and it, it's really family orientated. It's, it's, a, it's not a, a swim through or... Uh, it, it's really good family entertainment. It's great for everyone in the community. Everyone enjoys the Oyster Fest. It creates a a huge amount of excitement before it starts and on Festival Friday when it gets going. Then you've got Chris Baru trying to commit suicide out on, on the end of the jetty with his plane. He just does things which are incredible. It gets Sejuna out there in a, a positive light. 
because people don't understand what we've got here. They just think Sojourner's a little roadhouse on the, on the way over to Western Australia. But it's not, it's a thriving community with a lot of different aspects to it. My name's Janet Gregor. I'm a local um, business owner. I run a Sojourner Signs. I'm also a mum of three, community active member of Sojourner. Um, I was actually a backpacker from England, funnily enough, like a lot of other people in this town. Cruising through, came to visit a friend. Uh, how long ago was that? 15 years ago. And then that friend introduced me to my now husband. I've been now married for 13 years, three children. Two houses later, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> but don't regret a bit of it. I love living here. Um, the weather's great, the beaches are great, people are great. The climate's brilliant. You know, why would you want to live anywhere else sometimes? So my name's Melissa Kett and I'm the secretary of the Sejuna Business and Tourism Association. It was funny because I'd travelled through Sejuna so many times and it was literally just somewhere to stop and get fuel and have a, have a rest and have something to eat. Um, but when I actually got to stay here in 2015, I saw so much more. And um, yeah, I was drawn by the people, the, um, the environment, uh, yeah, the beaches and scenery and that is just amazing. I love hearing the stories of what um, tourists have seen whilst they've been around the Sejuna area from the oysters to, again, the beaches, the scenery, um, all the things that we're well known for here on the far west coast. The traditional opening of the Oyster Fest um, on Saturday uh, is preceded, uh, we have a parade uh, from our main shopping area which leads people down to the festival. Um, traditionally we have children marching in the parade and a lot of those kids are actually from a local dance group called Dance for Juna. Um, but we also have cars and uh, floats and people dressing up as sea creatures and um, just generally trying to make it colourful and bright. We have a lot of our performers who will march in the parade or, or be on floats as part of that. Um, so we try and get the whole community involved and the streets totally lined with people just watching the parade. Once we get down to the site and we have our official opening, uh, the first performance is always by Dance for Juna, who's been going now for, I think, about eight years, and they have around 100 to 120 local children involved in that group. Um, and they do an encore performance of their annual dance, so we're very lucky to have them involved. Yeah, um, yeah we have a, a parade in the morning. This year was a really good one, wasn't they? they had a lot of cars and and stuff in it, a lot of people around. I think that's probably what started the um, Saturday and you know, it always sort of has, it starts in the main street then everyone moves down to the foreshore by the sailing club from there. So. so another part of the Oyster Fest which has been there from early days um, is cooking demonstrations. We will quite often try to bring a chef that's well known to our area um, just to give people an opportunity to see local produce shown um, on a wider stage and what they can do with it. Um, so we were really lucky this year to uh, have Simon Bryant agree to come over for our festival and do our cooking demonstrations. Um, Simon, as most people will know, uh, was a host on The Cook and the Chef with Maggie Beer. He's the creative director of Tasting Australia, which is Australia's longest running food festival. He's now the festival director. So he came over to show local people and visitors, what you can do with uh, Sejuna produce, including oysters, whiting. He actually had some local community members involved as volunteers to assist him over the weekend. And they thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Every demonstration was booked out. As soon as people knew that Simon Bryant was coming, we had people wanting to come purely to see him at the Oyster Fest. So that was a great coup for us. So, so far we've done a 
Mirren and Soy sort of number um, on Friday and uh, <coughs> River Mint and Samphire, Sea Parsley, Mountain Pepper sort of Bush Tucker, um, but Smoked Oyster. Um, and now I'm feeding you a couple of different Asian ones today. And there, I know people that say, oh, you shouldn't cook oysters. Yeah, I agree. But there is a place for cooking them with respect. And these are baked and they're not baked to death. Um, has anyone eaten one yet? Okay. They're, they're just paid to say it was good. So this is Szechuan pepper. Um, prickly ash, it's not a true pepper, it's a bush pepper, so pepper's a vine. Um, we are growing some nice pepper up near Queensland, at a very expensive, about $90 a kilo, but I've been buying bits and pieces to try and support the industry. Um, Szechuan pepper could be substituted with Tasmanian mountain pepper. It's very similar, it's peppery, but it's clovey, and it's got that anaesthetic numbing thing to it. Um, when you mix it with salt, it's normally called prickly ash. So you pound it up and you mix it with salt and you get sort of like this numbing, um, don't really know how to explain it, clovey, hot pepper. Um, why you would enjoy numbing your mouth, I don't know, but I do. But what it does mean is that you can have an absolute bucket load of chilli and not feel it so much. I'm Ashley Zippel, one of the guys that operates this oyster tent, that organises the oysters and opens them and serves them. The next one is Romanoff, which is your, uh, it has uh, caviar, sour cream and smoked Atlantic salmon on it. The caviar and the sour cream work, again the smoked Atlantic salmon's there just to make it sound fancy, but it does work. And the one underneath there is wasabi and ginger. And it's very mild. You wouldn't believe it. It actually does taste beautiful. Yeah, there's no there's no heat to it, and it's and it's just a beautiful blend of flavours. Yeah, we're quite f quite proud of them. Mind you, mind you, that's very unique coming out of our conveyors over here. If you have a look, see the uh, see the oysters coming out like that. Uh, served like that, you I don't think you find them anywhere else. These oysters are from Smoky Bay. Uh, we actually put them aside, especially for the Oyster Fest, running into winter. The beautiful oysters running into winter. And when you're coming out of winter, to be honest, the only really good oysters that you will get are the ones that are good going into winter. And so we have these sitting on the prime racks, especially for Oyster Fest. And with our different recipes and the way we cook them, it just works. We'll do about 1,600 dozen cooked and perhaps a couple of hundred dozen clothes for people to take home and open at a later date. Um, so about 1,800 dozen oysters we will go through over the two days. One of the things people can expect with the oysters is that the oyster growers or our family that has uh, put so much effort into getting them ready for the Oyster Fest have just had that bit extra effort put into them to try and make them that little bit fatter, that little bit nicer, that little bit bigger. And we actually hold them back on our special fattening racks for longer than we do our normal oysters. So when people come to Sojourner, not only do they experience the community experience and what Sojourner is all about, they can also have uh, you know, a very good feed of some of the best shellfish and seafood going around. Over the years we've had a number of cooked varieties, obviously the traditional cooked variety is Kilpatrick but in Sojourner we do a west coast version of Kilpatrick so we actually don't just have the bacon and the Worcestershire sauce, we also throw in a mixture of cheese and that's very popular. So, uh, and we see a lot of those cooked oysters go out every oyster fest. Same recipe it has been for the last 20 odd years, but it's always been popular. As well as that, obviously we have the natural, and we have a range of different toppings to the natural. Uh, one of the all time favourites is also chilli and cheese. And um, this year they've had oysters Rockefeller, which has involved feta cheese, re a feta cheese recipe. And we've had a range of different recipes over the years, garlic cream, you name it. We've tried lots of different things, but every now and then you have to mix it up. But you always come back to the one major recipe, which is Oysters Kilpatrick, Sojourner style. As you can look back here, we have uh, 
three conveyor cookers. Uh, they're actually pizza ovens and they cook by, uh, by impinging technology with very hot jets of air. Cooks them very quickly, very thoroughly. Uh, retains a little bit of moisture and the flavour that comes out is just just magnificent and we can we can churn these out uh, en masse absolutely perfectly um, and I don't know of anywhere else that does it to be honest so um, so yeah uh, what we have here is definitely definitely a once off. My name's Ali Paulette from the Clare Valley Winemakers. So we do have a winery in Clare, Paulette Wines, but today we're representing the whole of the Clare Valley. So the Clare Valley Winemakers are honoured to be able to come over here and showcase what we do best, which is Rieslings, which goes so well with oysters. So we're really excited to be able to come over here this weekend and sell our wares and showcase what we can do, match perfectly with your Sejuna oysters. So we're really excited to be here and that's yeah why we've come over. We brought over a couple of pallets, so my mass isn't going to be very good. So 64 boxes of pallet and times that by 12 by 2, quite a few. So hopefully we can sell them all and um, everyone here can enjoy some really good wines. Competitions have been a big part of the Oyster Fest ever since the start. Uh, probably the best known for the Oyster Fest is the Oyster Shuck and Eat competition. Um, it's uh, a great spectator sport. Uh, basically the gist of the competition is that you need to open 12 oysters and feed them to a second person, which sounds really simple until you realise that the second person will be blindfolded um, and cannot assist you in any way. And the winning times are generally under two, two and a half minutes. So it's a really, really quick thing to do um, and it's a lot of fun to watch. It gets so messy, but um, it's fantastic. We really enjoy the shuck and eat. Yeah, expecting to make the finals? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Credit to the opposition, we'll see how we go. Okay, and we've got uh, Simon and Megan over here. How are you guys feeling? Good, how are you? Yep, and you're from Cow, you've got a bit of experience, I hear. We've, uh, yeah, we've got a little bit. Yeah, always farmers in Cow. So. so do you think you'll make the finals? I oh, probably don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the, what the uh, competition's like. And do you feel like you can eat 24 oysters in a row? Uh, I'm prepared for the challenge. <laughs> all right, let's have a round of applause for all our participants. Yeah, we've got a quick start here. Oh, oh it didn't make it here. She has to pick it up and eat it if you want to win over here, guys. It's just down to your foot to the right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's been rinsed, it's alright. Okay. <laughs> oh, yuck. <laughs> oh, they're, oh, they're very close at the end there. Here we go. Might be a new record here. Here we go. $200 cash, depending how quickly you do this. Oh. Congratulations. How do you feel? Stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need tea tonight, I'm fine. The Steinhold's also been part of the Oyster Fest since early days. Uh, essentially the competition is um, where people will hold a glass stein which uh, holds about 800 mils of liquid in it, so it is quite heavy, and they'll hold it um, straight out in front of them for as long as they can. We have had records there set at 15 to 20 minutes, but most people can only hold it for about three or four. It does get really, really heavy. We have a separate men's and women's division um, and it's always hotly contested. Okay, all we have to do is hold on for actually only 60 seconds longer and you can you can do it. Oh bad luck. Oh you're so close there, right? They're both looking a little shaky here. Yeah. Alright. Oh, she's the winner! She's the winner! <laughs> oh. Let's have a big round of applause for our winner and our runner-up. Fantastic effort. Okay, you're doing well everyone. Two minutes thirty. You can do it getting up towards three minutes, guys. Okay, we've got two and one has a bit of a wobble. One looks really strong. Okay. 
Oh, his other hand, his grip so tight. There's so much pain in that grip. Oh, well done, oh, yeah. Congratulations. Warren with a time of... Four minutes, 39 seconds. He's the winner. Warren, well done. Mom, I've got three kids. My oldest is um, 10. Um, they're a little bit older now, so they've actually got to the stage now where I give them money and they disappear while, while I sit back and enjoy the music and stuff. Um, but yeah, they love the carnival rides, the um, Bats of Castles, all the sideshow alley, all that sort of stuff. And the, I think actually their favourite part this year was the actual petting zoo. They loved it in there. They spent hours in there just, you know, touching rabbits and guinea pigs and all that sort of stuff. We have several competitions for the kids. Um, one of them is the iced coffee hold, which is very similar to the Stein hold, except that it's a 600 ml carton of iced coffee. Yeah, the iced coffee coffee holding competition is a um, competition where the kids are um, grouped into age categories, and then they have to hold a, ice, a 600 ml iced coffee with the arm outstretched for as long as possible. And the one who stays the longest basically is the winner. They also have a, a sandcastle building competition which is open to all kids and families uh, where we invite them to come along and build sandcastles on the beach and they get given um, prizes for that as well. It's Another competition that we do have for adults, which has been introduced in recent years, is the fish filleting competition. Um, you have uh, two whiting, local King George whiting, that you need to fill it. Um, and most of the time it is done within three minutes. Uh, we have had a tradition of women doing exceptionally well in this competition. I think the last three years have all been female winners. The Oyster Fest wouldn't be the same for local residents without Chris Baru. We've been very lucky. Uh, Chris Baru was actually born in Thevenard, um, so he's a local boy. Uh, he went on to win the National Aerobatics Champion on 13 separate occasions. I believe the first time he won, he wasn't actually licensed to fly aerobatics, but I think as a national champion, they kind of had to fix that pretty quick. When the Oyster Fest first started and they were looking for a draw card um, for people to come to the festival, one of the first people that they approached was Chris Carew um, because he was probably one of our most famous exports and um, we were, he very graciously uh, agreed to come along and with his signature red plane and do some aerobatics for us over the weekend and he's come back just about every year. There haven't been many Oyster Fests that Chris Brew haven't appeared at, um, so he's considered as much a part of the festival as the oysters. With the current oyster shortage in Australia, particularly in South Australia, there have been a number of concerns about whether or not there'll be oysters available in 2018. Uh, we can reassure the public that we've actually already identified a special little batch that's uh, about a quarter of the way through the growing process and um, we'll have them ready by next year's Oyster Fest. We have already identified the oysters for next year's Oyster Fest, so there will be oysters at the 2018 Sejuna Oyster Fest. The other thing I'd just like to point out is that we actually see, the oyster growers really do see this as a community festival and we become the focal point. So it's not just simply about the oysters, it's about our local community here in Sojourner and on the far west coast. And it's really important for people to understand that we're just part of it. And okay, we have the name Oyster for Oyster Fest, 
but it really is a festival for Sejuna and the surrounding districts and we just happen to be the industry that it's focused on. So it's not just about us, it's about what you can come and see, come and do and come and you know, be part of here in Sejuna. Traditionally we finish the Oyster Fest with a spectacular fireworks display over Murat Bay which is pretty special. It's the one time of the year when we do have fireworks in Sejuna and being able to fire them over the backdrop of the bay uh, is just absolutely stunning. Everyone comes out to the fireworks. It's one of the last things that we usually have on. So guaranteed rain, hail or shine, those fireworks will be going up on Sunday evening and everyone's out to see them.